And uh, last night we started the Barbecue Superstars Champions Network. And uh, Jim Berg will be the headline show on there. He's a big time champion. He's got going to the banquet to get five calls twice, two different banquets. Uh, he's won so much stuff this past year. It's just unbelievable what all he's been able to accomplish. And uh, then Chris Fulmer, of course, <clears throat> he won a big national championship in tailgating last year down in uh, Georgia at the Georgia Dome. And uh, uh, we'll pull him up on the Barbecue Superstars Network. And he's primarily going to be a tailgating show. We want to talk about tailgating on the Chris Fulmer show. Uh, uh, Chris Fulmer is the ultimate tailgater, and he really is. He's won uh, more champions than more championships than probably anybody else in the country uh, in tailgating. And uh, so <clears throat> we want to uh, put him up there. Now tonight, Tuesday night, we've got the Barn Goddess on the Barbecue Superstars Network, and and Whiskey Bent will be on the Champions Network. And uh, so tune in to either one of those shows. Uh, the new phone number to tune in to Whiskey Bent's show is 646-915-9540. And uh, call in, hang out with Chad Ward. He's always got a lot of great details and information. But last night... We had all six radio hosts from the Barbecue Superstars Radio Network on there at one time. And, uh, boy, what a night. I really enjoyed myself. Uh, we all hung out. Lance Moore, come on. He got us all laughing. And Chris Fulmer, he had some great information about the uh, national championship game. And, uh, uh, and the SEC streak was halted at seven uh, for winning national championships in a row. And uh, so... Uh, congratulations to the Florida State Seminoles because I tell you they feel that one heck of a team and the ACC uh, really showed up this year and uh, so congratulations to them uh, uh, we're going to be cooking some AFC NFC championship soup today and we're going to start off I'm going to get a pork sirloin over here and we're going to rub it and Put some seasoning on it. We're going to put it over here in the grill at 300 degrees. And we're going to grill it to get some char and to get some uh, juice off of it. And then we're going to come back, cut it up, and put it in the soup. We've got a bunch of other ingredients we're going to put in our AFC NFC championship. Now, the pork sirloin is for the NFC, for Seattle and San Francisco. And the carrots, the onions, the potatoes vegetable broth are for the AFC and uh, so we've got an AFC NFC soup going that hopefully will round out our complete soup now we've got about a two gallon or three gallon pot we're going to fill up full of ingredients and uh, so let's get started on our pork sirloin and let's make uh, some fantastic meat for our AFC NFC championship. Well, I tell you, I've gotten done with a big part of that tailgating section that I got on Barbecue Superstars. And I'm not like ever gonna be completely done, but what I've got on there now is a base of information. And uh, to get started with on all 300 teams and uh, you know not many people use pork for soup but you know the NFC has historically always had big players and big defenses if you think about the Super Bowls they won in a row you know it was always 55 to 7 or when uh, Doug Williams and uh, George Rogers played in that Super Bowl, he scored 35 points in the third quarter. It was really highlighted by a big time defense. And so, just like the uh, uh, 
the hogs, the Washington Redskins were always called the hogs. Just like the hogs, we're going to put us a little hog in our seat this morning. And, uh, so we got our hog laying out. Now I called Jan Charles and I said, Jan, how would you go about getting your pork ready for soup? So I'm going to do exactly what she said. She said, get some olive oil and rub it down. So we're going to put a little olive oil on our pork sirloin. We're going to rub it down. Yeah. Now, I told Jan that you're really not supposed to rub your rub. Now, I've seen people rub their rub before. What do you think? Go to a Daryl Mass Facebook page and post on there whether you think you're supposed to actually rub your rub or not. And uh, I've, I've had a lot of people say don't rub it, but you know maybe there's people out there who say do rub. And I know it's called a rub. You know, and that's one thing Jan keeps saying is, why do they call it a rub if you don't rub it? And she might be right. with you. I don't know why they call it a rub because there's so many competitors now who don't rub their rub. But I've seen some who do. Okay, we're going to get this little garlic powder and put on the outside of this soon to be soup pork. Now garlic powder doesn't have salt mixed in the garlic. Garlic salt does and garlic powder really adds easy garlic flavor to something. And uh, garlic salt will add garlic and salt to whatever you're working on. <laughs> Maybe you ought to rub your rub. I don't know. <laughs> garlic powder. I'm going to put a little uh, little rub on there. Good red rub. So we're going, to, we're going to create just a little flavor and taste and a little bit of bark even though we're not going to cook this sirloin to its entirety. Man, the rub want to run. He want to roll out of there today. Okay, I've got a little bit of <clears throat> another light rub we're going to put on here, just a little bit of something, something. And, uh, you can put whatever you want to do on yours as far as rub go, that's your choice. I'm going to leave the rub on the board though, so when we start doing our vegetables, some of that rub will get on our vegetables, so we'll put that on the seat. There you go, what you think? Now, if this was a competition, we'd sit there and let that sweat for 15 minutes. And letting it sweat 15 minutes before you put it in, putting your rub on 15 minutes before you put it in, keeps it from pulling the moisture out all night. So, uh, if you're fighting to put moisture in your pork, why would you want to take it out? Which I didn't know that until somebody else told me. But uh, you ought to do it that way. Okay, so now I got a tray here to catch all the juice and flavor that comes off of this pork sirloin. And we're going to go over here in this big PG500 and we're going to uh, we're going to put it in there, see if we can get this party started this morning.
got our water started boiling right here. And uh, try to get it ready early. We've got our PT500 about up to 300 degrees. And I'm going to put it up on the top shelf because Put it up there in the top and it's cooking. The only reason I want to do that is because if I put it on the direct grill, well, it might be all right on the direct grill. I mean, the whole thing is we want to we want to get it seized a little bit. Take the pan, put it over on the direct grill, and move our pork sirloin over so it'll catch all those juices and. Uh, Close her up. Then it'll fill out of grilling mode and into regular cooking mode anyway. So, uh, so we're gonna let that in there and let that get some juices rolling. We're gonna put this over here and we're gonna leave our rub on our board so it'll get all over our vegetables. And I went down to the grocery store this morning and I seen this onion and I just had to laugh. So I decided I had to use this onion this morning. How much do you think that thing weighs? About two pounds? That's incredible. I'm not going to peel it on a board because got all that rub we want to use up. We're going to get all our ingredients and put it in this big pan and then we're going to go over there to our soup and put it in there. I probably got about half a gallon to a gallon of water in our soup pot over there. And, uh, boy, it was funny. I called Jan this morning and I said, I've got a big pork sirloin and I want to make a championship soup out of it. I said, what do you think I ought to do to the pork sirloin to get it ready? Because I want to see how a culinary person would do it. And she told me exactly what I did. So, we're going to try a little culinary too. You know, onions are always the best base of a soup. And that, my friend, is an onion. <laughs> oh, look at there. Now, I'll tell you how you know when somebody's a culinary person. I don't do the other onion like that. I'm just cut these up and throw in there for stock to help flavor the soup. But I've seen Lori Sherman, I mean, uh, Corey Sherman. Uh, do this and I've seen it done I actually had somebody show me talk me through it before uh, cutting up an onion and dicing it really small without cutting your hands up it's just fairly easy to do and I was really impressed now it's on Big Papa's Battle of Barbecue Junction Corey doing this uh, like to get Corey and Jan cooking together on television. Okay, you take the onion, cut it, cut it, cut it deep. Not all the way through. Now 
Okay, there's three. Okay, that's deep enough. And then, oops, come down this way with it. And turn it and come down this way with it. Now the way she did it, she just laid it flat and cut that way, which I've seen people do that too. But, uh, ooh, man, smell them onions. Sure does smell good this one. All right, there's some AFC for you right there. I'm talking about Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos who've been favored all year long. And we're talking about the New England Patriots. And I knew... That would end up being Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. I mean, that I knew it was coming. I think Tom Brady was definitely wanting it. Uh, and Tom Brady has won that matchup in the last five years. But this time, he's not playing with the Baltimore Colts or the Indianapolis Colts. He's playing with the Denver Broncos. And now... They split during the season. Denver won that one. Uh, New England won one. But I'm pretty sure they were at home both times. New England won their game at home. And Denver won their game at home. So they're going to have to go to Denver. Denver's got the top seed. So, of course, when you talk about Tom Brady, he can win anywhere, any game. He can win with 30 seconds left. Just don't give that man the football. Because <laughs> Tom Brady and Peyton Manning are two of the best quarterbacks of all time. And uh, I hate that Peyton Manning stayed in Indianapolis as long as he did without the help he needed. Now, he had, he had some good players, but... They didn't really ever have the big name running back. They kept that one running back too long. And then, you know, they definitely didn't have an Adrian Peterson behind him, which left him his arm to carry the team a lot. And so he didn't win as many Super Bowls as now. He won. He did good during the season, which kept the seats full. You know, he 13-3, uh, 14-2. Year after year, but Tom Brady put him out in the AFC Championship game. And, uh, of course, there's no disgrace in that. And uh, uh, all the more Ravens put him out. Uh, but just like last year. Ray Lewis just went nuts. Ray Lewis go win that Super Bowl. That team was gonna win that Super Bowl. And uh, what a wonderful ending to a great career for Ray Lewis. But Peyton got put out last year. Of course, that was really his fifth year back after the fiasco about his neck. And, uh, I was in Indianapolis in the Super Bowl when the Giants played and won. And uh, the big news was is that Peyton shouldn't play anymore. And then everybody was running around, he needs to retire, he's going to get killed, and all that stuff. And uh, they, might, they might have been wrong. Of course, it ain't over yet. I hope he doesn't get hurt out there because it's, you know, football is dangerous. All right, so here's an Anaheim pepper. And I got this for the San Francisco 49ers. I know that uh, the Raiders have always been a big rival game for the San Francisco 49ers. And, you know, it's funny, in the season, you look at their overall records, and you say, you know, there's no way that this team can come in and play with this other team. Their record's too bad. But there is something to rivalries. 
And there is no way on paper that the Tennessee Volunteers should have beat the South Carolina Gamecocks this year. There's no way. That game was not even close. But Tennessee went in there, won that game. So, just like often Tailgater says, you can write all the stats you want, but you still got to go out and play the game. And it's like Steve Smith said in Carolina, the game's not going to be played in the locker room on a microphone. The game's going to be played out there on the field. So, congratulate Carolina Panthers on a great season this year. They really, really did a good job. They came back. So we got our Anaheim uh, peppers in there. We're going to peel us four potatoes and uh, put them in there. Potato peelers like this uh, save you a lot of potato. If you try to do it with a knife, you're going to waste a lot of the meat and the potato. And some of you got enough money, it doesn't matter, but if you're poor like the rest of us, you need to get as much out of the potatoes as you can. Look at there, it just skins right over the top of it. And essentially, all you're getting out of there is skin, and that is all. your Super Bowl plans are, but we're going to have us a big tailgate on Super Bowl day, and uh, we hope you'll tune in to Barbecue Superstars, check out your Super Bowl tailgate, we're going to try to cook food between now and then, so you can do at your tailgate, and this soup here is an excellent idea for uh, Eat a lot of people. It's going to be cold. We've been in New York, we're talking about high of 30, low of 22. But in New York, 22 feels like negative 7. The place is cold and wet in the winter. And uh, uh, not too bad here today. It's got a regular shirt on. Uh, it's got to be at least 40, 45, something, maybe a little more than that uh, out here. I'm sure there'll be some more cold days, but maybe December, January is the worst part of the winter. Man, I seen a movie one time about these Indians who were being chased by the cavalry and they went up into Canada. And they tried to spend the winter up there. And essentially their whole camp froze to death. It was really sad. Montana's cold. It's up on the Canadian border. Can you imagine how much cold it is when you get above my above Montana? Yeah, that's another interesting fact is that 
populations in the United States was all up north. Detroit, New England states, all that. And when air conditioning became available. That's when the southern states really started getting populated. And Texas really didn't have as many people living in it until air conditioning was discovered. I went to Texas in August for some meeting and went in there at 110 degrees. It's the hottest I've ever been. I had some Pepsis in a cooler in the trunk. Opened up the cooler and they were all busted open. They blew up. So I don't know how they handle drinks. I guess the Pepsi Coke trucks in Texas during the summer have to be refrigerated. It's a hot one down there. You know, uh, back in the days when the Cowboys rode the range and all that. Uh, that boy stood some heat. There's some movies of Clint Eastwood. And if you look at him, Good, Bad, and the Ugly was actually filmed in New Mexico and those hot areas. Boy, they were sweating, boy. <laughs> and uh, that's some tough dudes. Now, heat like that will get you in shape, though. And... Uh, all our troops out there in Iraq and Afghanistan, they know far better than me about high temperatures. And uh, got to drink a lot of water. And you know, they're not only in 120 degree heat, uh, they've got full uniform on with long sleeves, uh, most of them. And they probably have to do that to protect themselves. From but now we're going to get our rub right here. Ooh, a rub and all these potatoes. Before we put them in that uh, soup. Yeah, that PG 500 is starting to smell good over there. I tell you, that's a good smelling cooker. It's got some great smell uh, when it gets cooking. I tell you, it's, it's a it's a class act. Okay, we're going to take our vegetables and put them in our soup. So right now we've got an AFC shoot. It's going to be nothing but vegetables and stuff in there. a little bit. We're going to put some meat in there. It's going to be some NFC soup. Got us a little beef bouillon. We're gonna put that in there. Got us a little 
chicken for you. I tell you, these little cubes uh, really pack a lot of flavor. You can't say enough about standing around and unwrapping these cubes. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the pressure that they're put under to uh, make them into a cube, but it sure is good. All right, now we're going we're gonna get our vegetable soup broth. Put it in here. This is a 32 ounce, so that's a quart. We're gonna put a quart of Swanson's 100% natural, fat free vegetable broth on here. It takes a lot of flavor to season a soup. It's really difficult actually to season. We're going to make some AFC soup. We're going to have to get us some Cajun Quick Shake. Cajun Injector Quick Shake. Man, that's some good stuff right there. Cajun Shake. Now that will make that soup taste just a little bit. Hell yeah. We're going to get us some ground black pepper. Some regular black pepper. Gotta put black pepper in the soup. It ain't soup till you do that. And then we're gonna get some Louisiana hot sauce. Got us a big one right here. Yeah, put some little red in there. Just a little something, something, something. Spice up that ASC game. Tom. Brady and uh, my man going head to head. Now we're going to get this little garlic powder and put in our AFC championship soup. All down across there. We got to get that AFC championship game going this morning. gonna really hurt change the texture a little bit and put just a little bit of olive oil in it
All right, let's get a little bit of rice. Don't want to put a whole lot of rice in there. Put a little in there because it'll make it get thick. That uh, you could cook your rice before your soup gets done. Uh, so it won't have that extra juice off the rice. That extra. Uh, starch that comes off the rice. Now we need to get us a big old paddle. It's a big old paddle to stir it. We're going to put this little yangling beer in there. Yangling. It's the beer of the AFC. I'm declaring that. They didn't pay for that, but I'm going to go ahead and declare it. Put this little yangling in there. See what we got going on with the pork now. Made any move toward cooking? I've got any juice yet? Let's see what's going on. Oh yeah, yeah, we got us some drippings right there coming off of. She's actually cooking up pretty good. That, that grilling side is hot, boy. get my gloves. We're just looking for a little brown and a little. I'm going to get the, I'll go get my gloves and we'll cut that thing up and put it in and make it an NFC suit. Then we'll have AFC and NFC suit. Right now it's just American football conference. Get ready to do a big Jan Charles move. Jan Charles likes to spread the love around. So we don't get the grease that came off that butt right there. I mean that sirloin. I'm gonna put it in a soup. Juice came off of there. All right, now 
we're going to go back over here and cut up our sirloin and get it ready to go in the pot. All right. There's the hogs. There's the NFC. Seattle versus San Francisco 49ers. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> whenever you talk about the NFC, you're usually talking about big players, and big linemen, big running backs. And Frank Gore, he's going to end up being one of the top running backs of all time. I tell you, he really can't carry that football. He puts his head down, starts rolling. He's like a bulldozer coming across there. We could have cook this thing three or four hours before we put it in the soup. But and look at that big old piece of pork right there. Get some little fat from that pork in there. Char right there. That's what I'm talking about. We're going to put all this in here. See what comes to the top. We'll see if the AFC and the NFC are going to win this year. Got a little meat left on there, and I tell you what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of rub and put it on here. <clears throat> we'll cook this soup down for about four or five hours. We'll uh. Get that bone out, but for right now, just for the added flavor to our soup, we're going to put the bone in. Now that, that soup will cook every bit of that meat out of there and come out with a clean bone. So we're going to bone in our soup right there. Soup bone. Hey, it's about needs some bone in the soup in order to uh, make it taste good. Okay, so we'll come back down here on a pork. We're going to try to cut this stuff up pretty fine or finer. We've got some big pieces in here. we got a piece of bone on there I need to get rid of. This kind of weather, it's really hard to thaw out pork. This stuff is really heavy frozen and I uh, let it sit out for a day and a half. And it's still got a little frozen place in the center.
AFC, NFC, everything you see. Good in there. Still leave a little chunk. You know, get something on your spoon, your fork. Get you a bunch of soup. Sausage, no. Cut it all up. Some people do a whole lot of talking. We get ready to do a whole lot of yeah. All right, folks. We're going from AFC to NFC combination soup. Now the NFC didn't have any singular soup like the AFC did. They had singular meat in the grill. So, they're the hogs, man. Now, I can't make soup without filling the pot up. Folks, that just ain't gonna happen. If I make soup, it's gonna fill the pot up. And we're almost full. You know, it's got to be this ingredient put in there regardless. That's a big stick of butter. A whole stick of butter. Boom. Now let's mix it up and see how much we got in here. Oh, yeah. Put that bone in the bottom to come out. After it's all cooked up, cooked it up. There's a lot of fluid and stuff in there. Got some little rice in there. Got some little. Do have one more ingredient. That's a package of egg noodles, but I ain't gonna put them in there until it's almost time to eat. These things will blow up quick. Yeah. They'll dominate our soup for sure if I uh, put them in there now. And uh, that's it. That's our Super Bowl soup. What y'all think about that Super Bowl soup this morning? Super Bowl suit. AFC NFC Championship suit.
Oh, shoot. We're going to let it cook all day. We're going to eat it up tonight. All right. Well, that's our show for today. We appreciate everybody coming by. I sure would have loved to put that on the disc cooker this, this morning. That would have been fun, but uh, probably would have been too much to get in the disc cooker. And, uh, well, I don't know if you're working today, if you're at your corporate job, or you're uh, at home, or I don't know what you're doing, but uh, Barbecue Superstars love you. We appreciate you coming by today. Thank you.